So we're finally at the end. Um, there's not much else to do apart from a couple of things here. This is very useful to do. Uh, sometimes I back up a Linux from scratch system and then it's sitting on a disk somewhere and I see that it's a Linux system but I don't know what system it is. If it's got an LFS release, I try and read it and it will tell me what version of LFS it is so it's really useful. Um, also, these two files are really useful. Generally, uh, commercial distributions have either of these or possibly both and they're also useful to identify what distribution the system is because apart from looking at the uh, directories which nearly look always almost always the same um, you, you, you're not going to really be able to tell um, what system it is what distribution it is or even what version it is so these are quite useful so uh, we don't need to modify this one we need to modify these to put our name in as you can see so let's do the first one etc lsb release and all i need to do is just change this to put my own name in so kernel text and the other one which is called os release and again just put our name in here And in the BLFS book, there's a program that you can build, a small program that actually reads these, and you can in interrogate them, a bit like a database sort of thing. Next page, um, about getting counted, you can click on here and register yourself as an LFS user. Uh, it's a funny thing, because it's one thing I've never done for some reason, just never got around to it. Uh, well, not like I can remember doing it. Rebooting system, there's some suggestions here for packages you might want to install out of the BLFS, which what we've got here at the moment is a very, very basic Linux from scratch system. There's not a lot you can do with it. But by installing these packages, um, you've got a text-based browser to get online. Uh, Make CA allows you to add some certificates for secure connections within that, that browser. GPM allows you to use a mouse to copy and paste within virtual terminals. Uh, DHCP and the daemon in case you want to have auto allocation of IP addresses. Sudo can be useful to um, for building uh, packages and especially for installing them uh, to become the root user a lot easier than doing SU and then typing in the roots password all the time. Open SSH to manage the system remotely wget again in association with the make co package is useful for getting files um, and finally wpa supplicant for setting up network uh, sorry wireless network connections um, oh and also there's uh, a firmware's part for if you need any firmware to be installed to get some hardware working on your machine um, and also it reviews all these configuration files. There's a lot more configuration that goes on in BLFS. But for now, what we've got, as I say, is a very basic system. It's good enough to build upon. So let's log out and unmount all the file systems that we've had mounted, the virtual file systems. And if there are any others, to unmount them. So. Uh, I'll unmount the boot and then we can unmount the LFS file system itself. And finally, uh, we've got a reboot command. So here goes shutdown minus R now. So with any luck, the next thing that comes up on the screen when this finishes is a grub menu and yes oh no i've left this live cd in so let me remove that and i'll do control delete to remove that oh it's the usb i thought it was a cd rom and what have we got something's happening yes it's booted so it was a zero based i've just pressed the key to stop that booting automatically 
So it was a zero base numbering system for the partition. Uh, or was it? Sorry, no, it wasn't. This has just come up with a menu. So let's press enter here, see if it boots. Right, so it wasn't a zero based, it was a, a one based indexing system. So I do need to change this. Uh, to do this quickly, um, with that menu option highlighted, if you press E, it gives you a chance to edit the configuration. So, uh, oh no, it doesn't let you do that bit. So what I need to do is to press C for a command line and type some stuff here to emulate what would be happening. So the first thing I need to do is to do set root um, equals open bracket HD. And if I press tab, it tells me what um, hard disks are attached. Uh, I'm surprised it's telling me there's two because there is actually only one disk in the system. So whether the other one it's found is the CD-ROM maybe, but the one we want is HD0. If I press tab again, it shows you what it's found. And you can see, let's get this cursor over here, that there's three partitions. Um, Yeah, it's showing us that this one's 262 megabytes in size. Uh, that one's 2 gig in size. And this one's the rest of the space. It's a huge number. So I know that this is the right disk. Uh, we want partition 1. And then we want to... Um, is it set kernel, is it? No. Or is it Linux? forward slash, yep, this is it, I think. We want VM Linux uh, root equals slash dev slash SDA3 was our root partition. And don't forget the read only on the end. Yep, that's loaded the kernel. And now all we need to do is to type the command boot. And yes, it's booting. Okay, it looks like the, oh, right, there it is there. So let's log in as root and the password and let's straight away mount the boot partition because if you remember I set this to not auto mount so I need to mount it and then edit the boot forward slash grub forward slash grub dot cfg and I do, as I suspected, this does need to be changed to a one. So I'll save that, uh, log out and do a control alt delete and wait for it to reboot. And this time it should actually work. So I'll give it some time for the video to settle. Right, that's actually the grub menu. So I'm going to press enter there. It will synchronize in a moment. And you can see it's booting. So it definitely worked. Uh, hopefully in some moment. Yes, there it is. So there we are. We have a working Linux from scratch system. One little hiccup with the grub configuration. But apart from that, it's a uh, all booted. Uh, you've seen I've already used uh, Vi. Run it again. That's fine. Uh, you've heard there. I don't know if you heard when I come out of Vi, the PC speaker bleeped at me. Let's do it again. No, it didn't actually do it that time. Oh, it's because I pressed enter. So that bit works. We set that in the kernel. Uh, let's look at the kernel details. And you can see that there's the uh, name of the kernel. Um, so you can see LFS 11-2 is the host name. Um, and there's the kernel string that I added in the kernel itself. You can see it's appended it to the version number. So I've got dash i5 dash 650. So if I move this file onto another machine, 
I'll know straight away where this kernel came from. Also, um, if I do zcat forward slash proc forward slash config dot gz, I'll put that through less because it'll just whisk through the screen. You can see there's the config file that is also going to go around with the kernel that will always exist with it, which again I can use to build either a newer kernel on this machine or maybe adapt it for a kernel on another machine. Uh, df-h, you can see that we've used 3.2 gigabytes, but bearing in mind a lot of that will now be taken up by the sources of the Linux kernel. So if I do ds du-sh on the Linux kernel, that's nearly two gigabytes in size. So if we took that off of there, uh, well, plus the nearly half a gigabyte of the source files, which I tend to leave on the machine in case I need to uh, use them again if I want to rebuild something, maybe with some different parameters. So add another uh, half gig to that, that would be 2.3 gigs. So if we take 2.3 from that, that's about 0.9 gig. It's just about a gig or so, roughly. So it's uh, quite a neat, tiny little system. Uh, top, show you what's running. You can see there's four cores, zero, two, one, and three there. And this is just the basic uh, processes that are running. I don't know how many have gone off the screen. So that's all fine. Um, IP config will show the, uh, sorry, IF config will show the network status if I can type it correctly. So you can see there's the network interface. Uh, it's up and it's running. I should be able to ping the gateway. Yep, that's uh, working. So that shows the network is working okay. I can also do IPA to show some details as well. Um, so that's it really. Uh, not much else I can show you to show that it is a working system, but it certainly is. Um, yeah, that's it. The uh, next steps from here would be to start building Beyond Linux from scratch if you wanted to expand the system further. Um, it's not something I do videos on regularly because it's quite intensive. It takes a great deal of my time. Uh, it takes probably several weeks to go through the whole lot and then uh, a lot of time preparing a video. So I recently did it for 11.1, I think. Um, so I don't have any plans for doing it for 11.2. But if you do want to go ahead and um, uh, go and build more packages in BLFS, and maybe have a graphical desktop like KDE or, or GNOME, then you could use that video that, or those set of videos as a reference. There's approximately 100 videos altogether. Let's say it's quite a lot of work. Um, but yeah, you should be able to adapt 11.1. There wouldn't be many changes between the previous version and the current version. Um, but yeah, that's something you may want to do. Or even go ahead and recompile Linux from scratch again if uh, if it takes your fancy. Uh, and in fact, Linux from scratch obviously is quite capable of building itself. So I could now start building Linux from scratch at this prompt that I've got now if I wanted to and start building it again. So thank you very much for watching the videos. I hope you found it useful. Uh, I appreciate any thumbs up on the videos that you've watched and um, look forward to any comments you make and uh, subscribe to my channel if you want to hear of uh, any other videos that I produce. Uh, yeah, it'd be great to hear from you. So thanks for watching again. Goodbye.